Welcome back, Seth Bling here. After four years hovering between 1.9 million and 2 million subscribers, I finally hit 2 mil. To celebrate, I decided to release MarIQ, my newest neural network project that teaches itself how to play video games through trial and error without any human supervision. I'll talk about the 2 million subscriber milestone at the end of the video, but for now, let me introduce you to MarIQ. MarIQ gets its name from a technique called Deep Q Learning. It starts out without a clue how to play a Super Mario Kart, just trying random things. When it makes forward progress through the course, it receives a reward signal. MarIQ's entire goal is to accurately predict how much reward it will receive by taking different actions. And the better it gets at predicting that, the better it gets at choosing the action that will take it through the course the fastest. The use of reward signals to train a machine learning model is called reinforcement learning. It took 80 hours to train this neural network, and here I've rendered one driving sample from each hour of the training process. We'll also take a closer look at this later in the video. To help you understand how MarIQ works, I've added a bunch of graphical overlays. Here in the bottom left, you can see the neural network inputs. This is the simplified view of the course converted to 15 by 15 pixels of grayscale input. You can imagine it's a bit more difficult trying to drive a cart while only being able to see this. This is the same set of inputs made available to MariFlow, my previous neural network which tried to mimic a human driver. The inputs feed into a recurrent neural network. This type of neural network has memory cells capable of retaining recent information in order to help better inform the decision-making process. The neural network has two layers of LSTM cells, the first layer with 125 neurons and the second with 75. This is also the same type of neural network I used in MariFlow. Six times each second, the neural network outputs three scores. One score for driving straight ahead, one for driving while turning right, and one score for driving while turning left. It doesn't have the option to release the accelerator button. Below those scores, you can see the corresponding set of controller buttons with the highest score. These outputs are represented above the cart itself in the lengths of these yellow arrows. You'll notice that in this footage near the beginning of training, the arrows are relatively short, since it's not confident it can obtain very high scores. Whereas here, later in the training, the arrows get quite a bit longer. Periodically, you'll see red and green numbers coming out of the cart. These are the reward and punishment signals, which are the only means by which MarIQ can learn. The game divides each course up into several dozen checkpoints. These checkpoints are used to determine which cart is in first place, second place, etc. At this point, I need to thank one of my Twitch mods, MrL314, for putting this graphic together for me. My training code gives MarIQ plus 100 points when it moves forwards a checkpoint, and minus 100 points when it goes backwards a checkpoint. When the neural network outputs scores for going straight, left, and right, it's trying to predict how much reward it'll be able to get in the near future. As a quick aside, MrL314 also put together this graphic, which shows you how Mario Kart's built-in AI works. It contains the directions each AI cart should travel for any given spot in the course. This doesn't have any relation to MarIQ, I just thought it was pretty neat. Up here is MarIQ's face. This face is really just a representation of how long the longest of the three arrows is. If the longest arrow is pretty long, the face smiles because MarIQ thinks it'll be able to get a lot of reward in the near future. If it's frowning, it's because MarIQ doesn't feel very good about its reward prospects coming up. Over here is something I call the tryhard percentage. In order for MarIQ to learn, it needs to understand two things. First, it needs to know how good its current strategies are at generating rewards. And second, it needs to experiment to see if other strategies might be even better. When the tryhard percent is at 100%, its only goal is to understand how good its current strategies are at getting reward. 100% of the time, the course of action recommended by the neural network is the action taken. If the tryhard percent drops lower, say down to 50%, then half the time the driver will listen to the neural network and half the time it'll just try pressing random buttons. In this way, MarIQ can evaluate new courses of action to test whether they're better than the current way of doing things. And finally, here you can see the actual button presses being sent to the game. The yellow accelerator button is always pressed. The left and right buttons are the only ones that vary. Sometimes these button presses come directly from the neural network, and if the tryhard percent is below 100, then sometimes it's just random. Now let's take a look at the training process. Here's a sample cart taken from each hour of MarIQ's 80 hours of learning. Notice that earlier in the training, carts tend to get stuck on the walls more often. The neural network has special difficulty with thin walls because it can also see the road beyond them. 
Do remember, however, that some of the bad driving exhibited here is merely the result of a low try-hard percentage. As the old saying goes, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few carts, or something. Here's a graph of MaraIQ's average reward per second through the training process. And again, remember these scores aren't as good as they could be because the try-hard percentage isn't always 100%. Here's what it looks like when MaraIQ's try-hard is held to 100%, and it always takes what it thinks is the optimal action. In this mode, its average reward per second is about 145, whereas when I drive manually, it's about 170. All of the footage so far has been on courses in Mushroom Cup, which is the only set of races that MaraIQ ever saw while learning. What shocked me is what happened once I put it on courses it had never seen before. Here we can see MaraIQ racing on Chaco Island 1. It's never seen this course before, and yet it's still able to navigate its way through the course with relative ease. In the world of machine learning, this is called generalization. And to be honest, it wasn't even one of my goals. I was going to be happy if it could just drive okay in Mushroom Cup. I was actually pretty shocked when I started putting it on Flower and Star Cup courses, and it still held its own. Well, some of the time at least. So how does Q learning actually work? How does Mara Q get better at driving over time? To answer these questions fully, I'd have to get pretty bogged down in mathematical details. If you're interested in those details, there are a lot of good resources out there on Q-learning. Instead, I'll try and give you an intuitive view of what's going on. Neural networks are really good at predicting things. In this case, the neural network is trying to predict how much reward it can get if it takes each of the three available actions. As it builds up experience driving, it'll get better and better at predicting how much reward each of the actions will yield in any given game state. If it thinks too highly of a particular action and ends up driving off a cliff, over time it'll learn to predict a lower score for that action. If it's estimating too low of a reward, then over time its experiments with random actions will eventually allow it to learn that it should predict a higher reward value. The better it gets at accurately predicting the rewards for the three actions, the better it'll drive when it picks the action with the highest predicted reward. Before I wrap up the video, I want to share with you an interesting anecdote about Mario Circuit 2. In this course, there's a jump, where you cross over another segment of the track. If you don't take this jump straight on, it's pretty easy to miss the full jump and wind up going back half a lap. When this happens to Mara IQ, it receives a massive punishment of minus 1,000 points. However, if it makes the jump, it just receives the normal reward of plus 100 points. Later on, after 80 hours of training, we can see the impact. If it's not confident it can make the jump, it'll usually end up swerving and then ramming into this corner over and over. If it thinks it might miss the jump, it's not willing to risk losing minus 1,000 points, and once it's in the corner, there's simply no easy way to recover and get over the jump. However, if it's on a straight path, it'll have no trouble making the jump, and usually won't try and serve out of the way. It's obvious to any human that it should just always go for the jump. This behavior is the result of the reward system I've imposed, and when you look at it that way, there's a certain logic to it. All of the code that runs MarIQ is available for download from the video description. There's also a manual that'll help you get up and running, and help you run your own experiments to try and make an even better version of MarIQ. Now that I've got through all that, I want to take a moment to thank my subscribers. In 2013, as my channel turned two years old, I posted my 1 million subscriber special, Blocks vs. Zombies. In late 2015, I hit 1.9 million subscribers and thought that the big 2 mil was inevitable. What actually happened was that Minecraft's popularity died down a lot and I also started losing interest in the game. My pace of posting videos slowed down and basically I was losing as many subscribers as I was gaining. And that's how it stayed for quite a long time. Now, four years later, I've started posting Minecraft content again with a renewed love for the game, and it's definitely showing in the subscriber numbers. You guys have been super enthusiastic in the comments, and I feel as motivated as ever to keep making the best videos I can. You've been really supportive, and I just want to express how thankful I am for all the excitement you guys share with me. Seven years ago, when I quit my job at Microsoft to pursue YouTubing as a full-time career, I felt a huge amount of uncertainty at the long-term prospects. But seven years later, I feel it's still one of the best choices I've ever made, and it's you guys that have allowed me to keep going for this long. With all that said, that's about it, and I truly mean it when I say, thanks for watching.